Hey guys, Braxis here, and as you can tell, I'm recording right after my last video. I have a suggestion here. Let me see if I can find it. Um, let's see. It's from AAV, and what he wants me to do is he wants me to open the solar system simulation, the default one that opens when you launch the game, pause time, and then based off of uh, scale from astronomical units, let me get Google up here so I can just use what Google provides to me because I don't think this game will measure some major axis in astronomical units. It might. Let me check. Um, astronomical units. Oh, it actually does. Okay, so what he wants me to do is he wants me to... Let me close some tabs here. He wants me to close some tabs. No. Uh, what he wants me to do is he wants me to set each planet's diameter based on astronomical units away from the Sun the size or mass of Jupiter is it mass of Jupiter mass of Jupiter he is specifically defined mass of Jupiter so what we'll do here is we'll change the mass over to a setting at Jupiter and change it to a mass of 0.38 matching the uh, semi major axis and here we go one big mercury that's not quite as big as Jupiter, in fact it's about a third as big, but we'll be doing the same with all the planets. Including Pluto, because people seem to have this triggering when they call Pluto a planet, which is pretty fun. Uh, let's see, so we have some major axis of 7.2, so we want to change it to a mass based on a Jupiter scale of 0 0.72 masses of Jupiter. There we go. And then Earth will be equivalent to Jupiter, of course. So, let's see. Let's change... Well, I know what Earth is going to be. It's going to be one Jupiter. Well, that's weird. I guess that's radii for Earth. Okay, so mass... Jupiter, change it to a value of one. So, Earth is now equivalent to Jupiter. Does this mean I also have to change Jupiter's size? I think so, so we'll go ahead and do that. But right, let's start with Mars. Okay, so 1.52 masses of Jupiter will be Mars. I thought Mars orbited further than that. I guess not. There we go. Are we going to include Ceres and Vesta? I think that's going to be quite destructive. I think I'll leave them out. Just for simplicity's sake. Now, Jupiter, this will be a bit interesting. We want to change it to a mass of 5.20. Whoops, that's Earth's. 5.20 Jupiter. There we go. Now, Saturn, which orbits at 9.55 astronomical units. So, it's going to be a pretty big planet. 9.55. Oh yeah, that got much bigger. And considering its density is rather low, it's probably quite, like, large. Expanded, I guess. Okay, so now we have Uranus, which uh, orbits at 19.2 astronomical units. Now it's starting to get quite significant. So there we go, and I think it shifted into a brown dwarf. Possibly. Now, Neptune, which is... Where is it at? There we go. 30.1 astronomical units. So, let's go ahead and go to Jupiter and change it to a value of 30.1. And there we go. I think it also shifted into a brown dwarf. And we need a catalyst for everything. So, Pluto. It orbits at 39 astronomical units, so let's change Pluto to a mass of 39.6 Jupiters. And there we go. Pluto is definitely not a planet, for sure. In fact, I think it is a brown dwarf, so let's go ahead and hit play and watch the chaos ensue. And here we go. Now 
Now, what's generally interesting is the fact that I'm not seeing much difference in the inner solar system as of yet. Maybe because they didn't really grow all that big. Um, possibly. I think if I change Ceres and Besta, there might be a difference as well. Uh, was Mercury always that incentric? Hmm, I'm not sure. I should have probably used the performance simulation for this, but I really wanted to see some of the asteroids fly out. So, I guess it's time lapse time. So let's speed up the game a little bit. Get all these planets kind of rotating around. And one year per second, I will see you guys in a little bit. So you may have noticed I broke the simulation. Well, that's fine. I didn't think there was any significant effect. But Pluto was moving towards the inner solar system, so... I'm going to recreate this experiment, but with uh, the performance simulation, because... It was having some massive problems there. Uh, I'm going to have a time lapse, so you're probably not going to see any... Anything in that regard, but uh, yeah, give me just a moment. Okay, so here we go. Now I have the system without the Kuiper Belt, so hopefully this performs better without that massive stuttering problem I was ha having uh, when I was time-lapsing the last bit of footage before I accidentally deleted the sun and wiped everything out. But uh, here we go. Let's just see what happens. So, uh, I'm going to resume the uh, time lapse, but something interesting has happened here. So, as you can probably see, we lost Uranus. It's been ejected out of the solar system. But uh, Pluto and Neptune, being very, very large masses of kind of similar mass, have actually turned into a set of binary twins. 
That's super interesting. That's actually very cool that that actually happened. See? It wasn't wrong to include Pluto. But let's go ahead and resume. And of course, right after I said that, it just lost its... They're no longer twins. Aw, oh, that's unfortunate.
So, here we are, 2,500 years later, 2,507 years, and still climbing, but of course, it looks like we had some results here. If we zoom out, you can see that uh, Mars and Uranus were ejected out. I can't run the simulation much longer, it's been going for roughly half an hour, uh, but some interesting, interesting things have definitely happened. Look at Jupiter and is that Saturn? Which orbit is this? Yeah, Saturn. Jupiter and Saturn have gone uh, very, very high inclinations, if you can see. Neptune is now acting like Planet Nine. <laughs> uh, hypothetical planet that has a very, very eccentric orbit, very, very distant around. Uh, Neptune orbits very, very rarely. And if we zoom in here, you can see that uh, Earth and Venus are now kind of crossing paths almost. Earth is now orbiting at a semi-major axis of 1.02 astronomical units. And he, as you can see, has a pretty high eccentricity. Freezes for one half of the year and then probably thaws a little bit. And probably maintains a rather cold weather. Yeah, it thawed right there. Yeah, it probably gets quite cold because it doesn't actually orbit close to the sun. Actually, it turned brown there. It actually heated up quite a bit. Maybe because of the larger surface area? Not sure. As you can see, Venus is, uh... Yeah, no longer within, like, the uh, center of Earth's orbit. Of course, that is... Well, it's actually quite large, still. Same with Mercury, but, uh... Mercury managed to kind of maintain its orbit. As you can see, it passes by the sun rather close and goes molten for a small portion of its year. Let's see if I can kind of get that in a slower pace. Oh, there it goes again. One more lap. And let's see. Okay, here it goes. Slow it down. And here it comes for its pass around the sun. And you can watch as it starts to get hotter and hotter and grow molten. You can see the temperature right there. Let me get that in a bigger screen. And the surface temperature is climbing, and it gets so close to the sun that it basically starts glowing red. Any moment now. Ah, uh, it's starting to glow. Ah, uh, yeah, there we go. So, yeah, Mercury gets really, really close to the sun. This is 2,500 years later. These are definitely not what I would consider stable orbits, and I think... There is still plenty of shifting and tossing around that will still happen long before these orbits will become stable. If they ever will, they might all get ejected in the future. But I don't have time to really resume the simulation any further than this. So this is what happened at least in my simulation when I increased the uh, masses of these planets based on their distance from the sun. On a scale of Jupiter, of course. So if you guys like the video, please leave it a like, and if you want to see more videos like this, Please subscribe, it really does help. And I will see you guys in the next one.